Hey folks, this is Riker. Simul streaming, hopefully, on YouTube and Twitch. At the same time, this is my first Simul stream. Normally I stream on Twitch. But for the start of Abattoir of Zir here, the release, we wanted to try something a little different. And uh, I believe hey, all folks, systems this are is go right now. Simul streaming, hopefully, I on YouTube and they Twitch. Are. At the same this time, the YouTube this is my first Simul stream. stream. Normally working. I stream on Twitch. But for Abbot's the start of Abattoir just released, this is the new here, the release we wanted to try. Content. Something a little different. Just add it. And uh, I believe all of the seasons are go right now. Simul streaming, hopefully. Uh, on YouTube they are. Our early bird the same time, YouTube my stream first Simul stream. stream Normally I stream on Twitch. But for the start of Abattoir of just released, this is the new release we wanted to try. Content. Something a little different. Just add it. And I believe all of the seasons are go right now. Simul stream. Streaming, Double sound. Hopefully, That's not we're on YouTube. They are getting our echo. early bird the same time. YouTube stream work on Twitch. Stream work on Twitch. But I was one of them. You're just. Uh, I have an idea. That's what's happening. Okay, that should be fixed. Thank you for the heads up. That should be fixed now. Is it still double sound or is it done? It's still double sounding. We're fine now? Okay. Did you guys hear that alert just pop up? Hopefully the answer is yes. Alright, thanks for the help of the troubleshoot again. First simul stream. So I think you were... <laughs> I was uh, an artifact of that. Alrighty. I mean, it's special effects. That was a deliberate choice. Uh, the the epic echo. I'm I'm streaming in a vast cathedral, Tristram Cathedral. I don't know that. <laughs> I activated my echo because I said echoing. My uh, Amazon Alexa. Merly Whirly, new sub. Welcome and thank you. Welcome and thank you. Alrighty, so audio is now okay. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, glad we're glad we're good now, though. All right. So yes. All right. We'll we'll reiterate here. Abattoir of Zir just released about an hour ago. I've been waiting for the all clear to make sure there's no bugs or anything before we started. There are some bugs, but I managed to sort of resolve it. We'll explain what's happening. But, um, Sending power, power for the, the abattoir, abattoir today. today. Thank you, Kaldor. I need that abattoir power. I definitely need that abattoir power. Appreciate you, Kaldor. And Merly Whirly, gifting a sub to... Perhaz? Thank you so much, Merly Whirly. Alright, so Abattoir of Zir. The new pinnacle endgame content that was just released into the game today. <laughs> These are basically greater rifts, in short. Good afternoon, Riker and chat. Glyphs got the leveled, but I yes. made it through tier one. Hey, congrats on getting through tier one. Fantastic. Yeah, so that's the bug that we're going to talk about here in a moment. Thanks for the tier secret. So, uh, new pinnacle content. There are 25 levels. So imagine D3 greater rifts, 25 levels. But the discrepancy, the difference in level 1 to 2 to 3, is a lot more significant than Nightmare Dungeon tiers. So a level 1 Abattoir of Zir is equivalent to a 104 Nightmare Dungeon, and it just keeps going up from there. So it's it seems that it's expected from the devs that no one can complete a tier 25. We'll see if one of the max roll boys is going to do it. I certainly won't, but uh, what's on the docket today, I'm going to be doing my Hammer of the Ancients Barbarian build and see how that fares in the Abattoir of Zir. Why do we want to do Abattoir of Zir? Well, one is just pinnacle content to test your build. They, they added this because game's too easy. Game's too easy. No one's going to complain about Abattoir being too easy. Hopefully. <laughs> um, so that's one. It's it's meant to be more pinnacle content. Like, there's not much pinnacle content in the game right now. You have Echo of Lilith, and that's basically it. So, um, outside of that... The rewards in Abattoir are a huge amount of Glyph XP. So it's a Nightmare Dungeon at the end of which you get a huge amount of Glyph XP. So if you don't have your Glyphs to, 20, to 21 yet, it's an easy way to get them to 21. That's going to dovetail into our little bug here. And then number two, 
is a new glyph that we're going to get just from the abattoir. I believe it only works in the abattoir, but it is a huge amount of power and it can level up to 200. So it's a new glyph that's just going to help you progress through abattoir, which is really just to test your might. I love Mortal Kombat as a kid. Um, all right. The bug. Before you run into the abattoir today, folks, please, 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 please open up your Paragon board and check your glyph levels. We all lost about a one, roughly one glyph level, well, it depends. One to two glyph levels to three. Level 21 glyphs got downgraded to level 21, and level 15 glyphs got downgraded to level 14. That's the worst offender, because you might have a level 15 glyph, and you have set up your paragon board to juice to juice, to just get enough radius. And now, if you're down to 14, you have lost your radius, so now you're not going to meet your requirements. So, before stream, I had I had two glyphs that were at 15. I had to re-level them to 15 um, in order for my Paragon board to still work. So, before you dive into the Abattoir and get killed and lose your key, because it's once you use it, you have lost it, do go and make sure that everything is copacetic. Hopefully, by the time you folks dive in, this bug will be fixed. <laughs> Hopefully, it'll be fixed. But... Ah, alrighty. We're going to dive into the abattoir here. You have to start off by going to Ked Bardu, the city of Ked Bardu. Uh, and rank 21 glyphs got dropped to rank 19, it seems. Oh, the donation text-to-speech is still doubled. Okay. I see. Thank you for the heads up on that. That should be fixed now. Thank you for the heads up. All right. So hopefully that resolves everything now. I think it does. And I think I know why it was doubling up that text-to-speech. Okay. Um, yeah, Blizzard has acknowledged the bug. They're looking into it regarding the Glyph XP things. And it seems that we have to start by going to Noman the Occultist. I thought there would be some story thing. I guess not. Um, Do we just craft it now? Well, there we go. Bloodforge I was not in a hurry, and just did my best to keep a shield up on ball lightning. Ah, nice, nice, nice. Alright, that should not have been doubled up, right? That just went through once, thanks for the chair secret. So, I've not made... I've not really made any changes to my Hoda build in preparation of Zir. I'm gonna regret that, but I want you folks to see what a, a pretty... Like, this is a pretty well-kitted... Level 100 Hoda Barbarian. I got my my Tusk Helm. Uh, my chest armor is not that good, but I have my Might on it. Uh, I got really good uh, Bracers. I got a near-perfect uh, T-Bows. Um, Ghostwalker Boots. My resistances are maxed across the board. Uh, all my gear is like pretty, pretty optimal. It's not perfect, but it's very, very good. So I have very good gear. Uh, my glyphs are, uh, uh, most of them are rank 21. I think two of them are rank 15. So there's a little bit of room for improvement there. But again, this is a relatively optimized character. It could be made a little bit more powerful, but not like leaps and bounds. This is for like kind of normal running the current difficulty in the game. In order to... To survive Abattoir, I would have to build more defensive. But I want you folks to experience that with me firsthand. <laughs> and Hammer of the Ancients is arguably the most powerful, if not one of the most powerful builds in the game. Oh, sorry, that's true. My, my, my glyphs are now rank 19, not 21. Correct. <laughs> they were 21 before the patch. They are now 19. Ah. <laughs> uh. But, um, yeah, so for anyone who hasn't played Season 2, Season 2 overall has been a huge win. Uh, almost everyone who has played it universally agrees that this makes the game so much more fun. Uh, if you didn't like Season 1, like, like this should have been Season 1. Okay, so, uh, now these Bloodforge Sigils. For now, 
you can only craft a tier one. Now note as well, these cost a ton. Look how expensive these are. Look at how much sigil powder these take. 800 compared to 450. So if they keep going up, oof, that's a lot of sigil powder. So I'm going to go ahead and craft one here. Boom. We've got one of our sigils. Got one of our sigils here. Absolutely crucifier. Yeah, the, the journey that the game tribes has made is quite significant. Now, here is where you find the visceral channel. Don't bother going in here until you've crafted one of these Abattoir of Zir Bloodforged Sigils. Because you need one of those to activate it. Alrighty. Now, the one thing I will do is I'm going to pop a uh, an Iron Barb Elixir. I don't have any Iron Elixirs for the plus 900. Those are drop only, but I crafted a uh, one of these. Just to get a little bit more. So yeah, overall, Season 2 has been a huge win. We'll see if Abattoir is another win or not. Okay, so this is where, what happens when you go in here. Um, am I supposed to activate this while I'm outside? Yes, okay. So I guess we activate it outside, and then it's going to transform this portal. But that's what happens when you just go in like that. Yeah, my transmogs are a hodgepodge of different things. I have like four or five different sets here coming together. Song of the Mountain Incense can get you another 200. Song of the Mountain Incense, huh? I'll keep that in mind. It's not a whole lot. Every little bit helps. But maybe I'll hold that off for uh, for a bit here. Thanks for the uh, the heads up. So again, we're going in with max out resists. Uh, my armor is almost 9,000. Very well performing Hoda build. This is the new pinnacle. So again, like Hoda, Hammer of the Ancients right now, makes all the content in the game before Avatar of Seer a complete joke. Uh, you can like one-shot enemies with this build. Including bosses. Alright. Level 1. Here we go. Now, here's the thing about Abattoir. This is why I'm nervous. Uh, it's basically hardcore. You don't lose your character, but you get one life. You fail, you fail. You die, you fail. It's over. So, there's no PTR in D4. This is live. That's why it launched with a little bit of a bug. God, that's a lot of poison. Oh my god, that's a lot of poison. Okay. And my poison res is maxed, by the way. Look at that damage. Look at that damage I'm taking. What? Survivability is the main issue? Interesting. Well, that's probably with your build. I think builds that are accustomed to doing broken amounts of damage are going to find survivability is going to be the issue. Uh, no, sorry. No, wait, what did I say? What did you say? Okay. Uh, don't distract me right now. I don't want to die. Okay, so I think, barring an upset, I'm going to be fine in this. But you can see monster level is 155. I got to watch out for those spider explosions, so that's going to be rough. Gotta watch out for the double boom on the spiders. Little spider babies here. Um, okay, you're on a 10 minute timer in Abattoir. Ballista hurts. But we're, we're doing well on the timer. Even though I've not really been... Not been trying to go too fast. I'm overextending a bit right now. Now I wonder, do we have to slow play it? Are we going to be able to jump 
to a significantly higher level, or do we have to do rank 2, rank 3, rank 4? I asked because in D3 it was like, if you like really, really overshot, if you like really overperformed, you can jump some levels. I suspect that won't be the case in Avatar, just because there's not a whole lot of... Like, 25 isn't too many levels. Okay. This is bad. I, what's bad, rather, is that I'm getting overconfident. And overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Because what's gonna kill me is gonna happen really fast. It's gonna be something that's gonna be, what the hell just happened? That's how I'm gonna die. Something like an explosion like that is what's gonna kill me. So far we're doing fine though. Also means we're gonna get our sigil. Now the question is, shall I start using that sigil immediately? Probably not. I think I'm gonna see how far I can push without modifying my build. And then we'll start seeing about what changes we can make. How much that new sigil actually ma- ooh, 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 took some damage there, took some damage there. Turning our hammer, the, uh, Wrath of the Berserker back on. So, today we're, we're focusing on, uh, Hoda Barb, and I think tomorrow we'll do Ball Lightning Sword. That's the current plan, we might change the plan. I have altered the deal. Okay, and our only goal here is to kill monsters as well. Again, look at all that poison damage, and I have maxed out poison res. Ow, ow, ow. Okay. Oh, Blast Wave Shrine. Uh, okay, here come the Bloodseekers. Ho, 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 Wow, that's a lot of damage. Oh, boy. Oh, dear. Okay. Can we isolate them and fight them one by one? Uh, what, what even happened there? Okay. <laughs> when did I kill the other two? I'm not complaining. I'm just confused. But that's the power of Hoda, right? The one-shotting there. But you saw how fast they were doing damage to me. Oh, the blast wave got- Really? The blast wave was enough to kill them? Wow. Brandon saying, I wish Season Journey completion wasn't an obligation to play this game mode. If you haven't completed the Season Journey, you're probably not ready for the abattoir. Um... Like, I'm trying to think, is is there any reasonable circumstance in which you'd have, like, a maxed out character and not have completed the season journey just accidentally? But the power of the yeah, bomb, Yeah, they kind of surprise you. And the delay is long enough for disobedience to fall off. Ooh, okay, yeah, so I don't have disobedience yet, but that will be part of the build. Alright, so, look at how much XP we get here. I think before I start leveling my Tears of Blood... So this needs 2,000 XP, and it, we get 1,000. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this opportunity to just start maxing out. Um, I wonder if I should re-level these. Should I re-level them, or should I wait for... Nah, I'm going to start leveling my territorial here. Boom. Boom. <laughs> uh, this is the... <laughs> Anyone who's like, oh man, it takes so long to level the Glyph XP, just go do some Avatar of Zero, man. Look at that. Look at that. Cheers, secret. Someone chat saying 60 FPS. The stream is playing at 60 FPS, right? It should be. It ought to be. Yeah, again, a rank 1 Abattoir of Zero is equivalent to a 104 Nightmare Dungeon. So this really is pinnacle content for end game builds. You're not going to be doing... You, you, you can't do this with a level 70 character. Probably. Maybe if you're from... You know, you're one of the Max Roll boys. You know, one of the, one of the, one of, one of the blasters from Max Roll, maybe. Uh, okay, so that's rank 1. Let's go do a rank 2. 
Oh, and you get the recipe for the rank two. I see. Back to Kid Bardu. Stream is at 60 FPS uh, on YouTube as well, right? Wonderful. Do you think D4 is finally playable? Diablo 4, if Season 2 was Season 1, I don't think anyone would... I don't think the meme of D4 bad would have ever started. Is is the game perfect? Absolutely not. Is there still work to do? Absolutely. Does it still need a loot 2.0 itemization overhaul? Absolutely. But now, the core game is fun. The activities to do are fun. Leveling feels good. Everything feels good other than loot. <laughs> Uh, and that, that, they said is coming in Season 4. Alright, so with this recipe, we're going to go over to our Enchantmer. Enchantment, man. Uh, nope, we don't. Uh, uh yes, okay, you, just have, you have to be on the correct tab, and then you can teach him the ways. Brohemian Trapsody, thank you so much for the 11 euro. I appreciate you. Thanks so much for the support. Happy to have been able to provide content over all these years. I actually, when looking at my YouTube live streams, I saw my, my one of my live streams was from nine years ago. It was before, before I had the hat. No one cared who I was till I put on the hat. And that is uh, Lotis with a raid. Thank you so much for the raid. Hope you're uh, like an abattoir. All right, let's craft ourselves a tier two. Thank you for the love, Lotis. Uh, so my build can be found on maxroll.gg. So if we go right here, maxroll.gg, you click Diablo 4. You click tier lists, you click Abattoir of Zir builds tier list. Hodabar ball lining is what the boys are predicting to do best. I personally think Hodabar is going to be better than ball lining, but happy to be wrong because I have one of both. Uh, Poison Shred Druid is a bit of a... Um, it's unclear. The, the builds that can double dip on the Glyph powers. But uh, yeah, you click Hodabarb and that is the build that I'm following. By Snail, a Barbarian Master. Uh, that was my first abattoir. We're now doing a Tier 2 abattoir. Stormgate got funded on Kickstarter in under 15 minutes. Wonderful. What were they asking for? Can we hear you, Decker Kane? Ah, hello. Good day. Good to see you. Hmm, you've got quite a treasure there in that Herodric cube. Stay a while and listen. They were asking for 100k and they got funded in under 15 minutes. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. How is the, um, the stream quality on YouTube? How's the bitrate? Because Twitch and YouTube have different encoding methods. Oh no. The lunatics. This is going to be bad. Oh, I'm going to die to a splosier. Yeah, so Twitch and YouTube have different means of encoding. Twitch, uh, you can get by with a lower bitrate. And the way they encode video just works better in a live setting. YouTube, to get comparable quality to Twitch, you need to stream at a higher bitrate. Um, so I'm streaming at a 50% higher bitrate. Uh, sorry, 30% higher bitrate. No, 50% higher. Uh, yeah. My, my 
YouTube output is at a 50% higher bitrate than my Twitch output. To try to compensate for that, but it still not might be enough. I might have to go double. Oh gosh, and then there's the guys freezing us. This already feels significantly harder. So, hold on, did the monster level change? Was monster level 155 in the other one as well? Uh, I'm not doing well. I need to focus. I need to focus. I'm falling behind on the timer. There's a lot of bad things going on. That's a lot of damage. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, almost died there. Okay, we're getting caught up with the timer, but I gotta focus, I gotta focus. Don't think, just do. It's a lot of poison, though. Come on, I gotta bonk. This is a market increase in difficulty. Just going to tier two. I, I, I mean, it's also a worse um, rift. No, 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 no! Oh my god! So what happens is sometimes metamorphosis glues you at the end of a jump. It roots you. It's like I don't know if it's a bug or what. And then I panic and fat finger things a lot. It's a lot of damage though. It's a lot of damage though. Okay. We're fine. We're recovered. Whoa, there's a little lag spike there, too. Oh, man. The, uh... The blood seekers on this one are going to be... Terrible. I gotta leave myself enough time for the blood seekers as well. Good thing I got big bonks. Was dang man. Never had to play so defensively on a Hoda Barb. This is just rank two. Okay. Things are stabilizing a bit, but that means I'm growing complacent, which is bad. <laughs> I nearly died. I'm a conduit, so at least I can't die. I do less damage as a conduit than as a Hoda, but that's fine. I gotta watch out to not insta-die once I drop out of Condi. Okay, I did not insta-die. That's good. No, 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 boom! Oh, oh god. Those, those kamikaze bombers terrify me. Okay, why am I coming back down here? It's a lot of CC. It's a lot of CC. What a crowd control. No, 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 no! Oh my god, I keep fat fingering. That's how I'm gonna die. Okay, I have four minutes left. We're fine, we're fine, we're fine. Let me get that potion. And I need them for the blood seekers. Okay, here we go. So I wanna be in a position where Oh go okay, go 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 okay. Good, we did a lot of damage to a lot of them. Okay. It's good that they spawned all on top of each other, so I was able to hammer them all at once.
Okay. Because of the Hoda build, the Bloodseekers aren't too bad because I can bring big bonks. But dang, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, from the campfire, the tier 10 mobs are only 157. So I think there's something weird with monster level. I don't think the mon I think the difficulty increases beyond just monster level. And that's probably because they don't want to be um, making the difference so bad with regards to armor scaling. Can any P60 run smooth on YouTube? Okay, that's good. That's good. Do you think the skills of every class need to rework for the itemization perspective? D3 had effect focus tags and aspects such as this skill now has an effect that triggers this effect. Do you think skills of every class need to rework for the itemization? I feel like I'm not following Jesse. I don't think. I mean, some skills need reworks, but just because they're they're underperforming, but... Yeah, so I'm not bringing up the map intentionally. It's I'm trying to press uh, 1 or Q, and I'm hitting tab instead accidentally with my pinky. I'm just fat fingering it. Anytime I'm bringing up the map like that in a panic, it's never intentional. Hey, doing 509... What I have to do to get a werewolf tornado druid to be able to do something in abattoir? You should be able to do at least a rank one. Snail improved the abattoir of Zero Hodabil. When I looked a few days back, it was uh, too many changes to implement quickly. Now it's much better, and you can reuse Marshall, which I had not, which I had mothballed, diving in momentarily, warming up first. Good luck, Portage. Are there random affixes? Um, that's a good question. I didn't pay attention. Are there random affixes? It feels like... Hmm. Actually, I'm not sure. Are there random affixes in the Avatar of Zir? Alright, so... Um, we'll keep up in our territorial here. Before we start working on our Tears of Blood... Oh, I forgot to track how much XP we were getting for this one. Quite a bit is the answer. We got a lot of XP actually. Because a rank one, hmm. Rank one gave a thousand XP, so rank two is given a buttload. Are you for real? How much whoa, how much XP is rank two giving? Is it giving two thousand XP? Is it a thousand XP per level? A thousand a hundred. Really? Okay, a thousand a hundred. What I mean is like waxing gibbous or what was it called should have some other items work as that one. If you're asking should there be more affixes that alter skills? Absolutely. Like the Dolman Stone is a really cool idea. Okay, so confirmed rank 1 gives 1000 XP, rank 2 gives 1100 XP. So I think the method where in which you're going to want to level your glyphs as fast as possible is doing rank 1 Abattoir, Abattoir of Zir. Because rank 2 is not just 10% more difficult. It's more than 10% more difficult. So if you're just getting 10% more XP, spamming rank 1 avatar is going to be the way to fast level your glyphs. Do I think GTA 6 will be a Diablo 4 expansion killer or all games killer in general? Nah, it's a very different kind of game. It's going to be popular, but... Um, people play... People who like a certain type of game will continue to play a certain type of game. GTA 6 is going to be the GTA 5 killer. 
Okay, rank three. This is going to hurt. The cost as well goes up. So this was 800, 850, 900. Someone's saying that there are random affixes that are not to be shown on the sigil nor on the map. Oh, geez. Interesting. Interesting and horrifying. Oh my gosh. Okay. Something. <laughs> That's actually crazy. So there's no way for you to know until you get inside whether you how badly screwed you are. All right, let's get that uh, rank three going. I think this is gonna be the one where I fail. Maybe I shouldn't uh, jinx myself here, but. Yeah, it's a shame that the Dolman Stone didn't result in a like a top tier um, druid build, but I just I still love the idea of it, and it's a simple thing to just you know buff or, or you know change the balance of something, but coming up with the idea and implementing it is is really cool. Rob's already on tier sixteen. Nice. Oh, I didn't fill up my potions. I'm. Uh, I'm following in the grand tradition of Rich. Shit. Well, now it's going. If I leave... It's still gonna be counting, but I, at least it's not closed. I can teleport right in? Oh, okay. There's a healer's right here, okay. You won't find a better healer in all the steps. All right. So far, so okay. It's a better, it's a better nightmare dungeon, or whatever you want to call it. No, 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 no. Good thing the monsters are relatively... Like, these are easy monsters because they're slow. They're letting me be for the most part. Oh, the splash got me. Oh, first rip. The splash. I should have been paying attention for that. It does do a lot of damage. Dang. All right. Alright, lost that one. And it was such a good run, too. Dang, that was a good run. Okay. Now the question is, do I start leveling the Megaglyph? For every five core stats purchased within range, you gain 2% increased damage. Grants 50% bonus to all rare nodes within range. Bonus increases by 10% every 10 levels. I think I do want to try the rank 3 again. And, um... I just need to be more careful. If I fail again, then maybe I'm going to start working on leveling the Tears of Blood. So yeah, for anyone who's wondering how to unlock the Abattoir... 
The first, you, you gotta head on over to your occultist. Once you talk to him, there's gonna be a new recipe. And you're gonna see you can craft a, a tier one blood forged sigil. When you open that, it takes you into the abattoir. All right, so let's try that tier three again. I still got my my potion going. Okay, and I could just go straight like that. Okay, that's cool. Uh, it is challenging. The new content is... Uh, it is definitely challenging. Especially given... How high the challenge will presumably get. I don't think people are going to come away from Abattoir and, and say, Oh, the game is still too easy. Well, might there be some people? Yeah, but the average player... I, I don't think the average player is going to be able to do a 25 Abattoir. See, I went from a really good run to a really, to a, to a worse one. This isn't a bad level, but it's not as good as the other one. However, maybe I'm not going to get the silly. Water wave kill me. I think we've already gone farther than the last run. Get out of here, ranged guys. Where did the monsters go? Did I kill them? I guess I accidentally killed them. Okay. All right, this run is actually a pretty good run. The map layout at the start was making it rough, but now that we're in some open terrain... Okay, I'm vulnerable right now. That's not good. Okay. It's going all right. It's going all right. So again, I'm trying to see how far I can put ooh, 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 push this build without any changes specifically for abattoir and without the gem. The, sorry, without the glyph. I'm not going to break my head trying to push, but just to get a baseline idea of how how powerful and how challenging how powerful the build is and how challenging the content is. Blood seekers are coming soon, so here's the bad thing though. This open map means I cannot hide from the blood seekers. I cannot pull my shenanigans where I was trying to separate them. 
Okay, here we go. Bloodseeker time. Oh, this is not good. Come on, come on. Get at least one of them. Okay, I got one. Okay. No, no. Got two. Alright, we're okay. It's the big bonks, man. Gotta love the big bonks. Did we get him? What's that? Okay, there we go. Alright, tier three done. Tier three done. Uh... I mean, I might as well re-level my gems, like, my glyphs, in the meantime, at least. Thousand hundred XP, so every level seems to give one additional, uh, hundred XP. Alright, tier 3 done. So it's called the Avatar of Zir, but you don't actually fight Zir at the end. You fight three random Bloodseekers. Which is actually more exciting. And, yeah. The main reward here... Well, the purpose isn't for the reward. The purpose is for the challenge, but the main reward is the Glyph XP. Because the gear is just... Like, it's not 925 or anything. Arbiter Singh Rack says he believes the average player won't be able to clear level 1 of the Avatar of Seer. Uh, I think anyone who can do a Nightmare Dungeon 100 will be able to do a rank 1 Avatar of Seer. In my opinion. Or most people who can do a, a, a level 100 Nightmare Dungeon can. At least some of the shrines are trapped in the challenge. That'll be maddening. Uh, no. All right, let's go. Craft level four now. Teach him the recipe. Need something blessed? Cursed, perhaps. Yeah, either or works. All right, tier four. It's still going. Oh yeah, maybe Zir is at uh, tier 25, it's true. Who knows? That'd be interesting. Oh yeah, why am I- I keep running towards it, but you don't have to. It counts as a nightmare dungeon, so... Alright, tier 4. Here we go. Am I looking forward to Titan Quest 2? Absolutely, yeah. Titan Quest was a great ARPG, and I'm hoping that Titan Quest 2 lives up to it. Okay, that hurts. Okay, these guys that do the wind-up attacks are gonna be scary. No, no, no! Nearly died. Knock it off, you guys. So here's the problem. I do want to stack a disobedience, but I don't have any good pants. I also don't have a good chest. So I've gotta I gotta find good pants with good stats to put a disobedience on to stack more survivability. I'm gonna be losing my T-bows, that means. 
This is poison. Come on, man. Gotta gobble up all the potions that I can. guys no 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 okay fine shock lance isn't too bad I suppose okay we're not doing amazingly on time but Not doing too bad. This is another pretty good level, to be honest. Barring what's happening right now with the fire explosion, man. It's nice not to have to pick up any items. <laughs> That's nice. Just focus on killing monsters. Potions. Ooh, ooh, that guy could have killed me. Let him dodge out of that. No, 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 no. Ooh, 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 I did it again. I gotta change my keybind so I stop doing that. Keep fat fingering my map. So when I'm trying to pop potion, I pop map instead. There's a lot of guys here with wind-up attacks, which is alarming. Barring a mistake on my part, I should be able to- Oh! <laughs> I'll stop finishing sentences. That say I'm gonna be okay and beat this level. What's interesting is that hardcore characters have better protection at being able to complete the abattoir than softcore because all your cheat death things will save you from failing the abattoir. Love channeling shrines. Alright, and we got enough time for them blood seekers. Come on. Alright. I can use this pillar. Oh, that's not good. No 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 no. No 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 no. No 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 no. Okay, we're fine. Alright, tier four done. You're four done. Oh, you still fail the abattoir? Oh, okay, you just don't permadie. I thought that you wouldn't fail the abattoir. Interesting, interesting. 
Hey, cheers, Kyle. Uh, how do I get my cursor to blink like yours? If you mean like this, I've just, in my controls, I've bound force move to my scroll wheel. So I'm, I'm scrolling up and down to move. It's a lot less strain than either clicking or holding a button down. I'm just gently rocking my finger back and forth. I, I have a mouse with an unlocked mouse wheel, so there's like almost frictionless. Um, I think I'm not going to bother leveling exploit simply because I think exploit is what I'm swapping out for Avatar of Zero. Yeah, I'm going to keep Marshall, Might, Crusher, Ire. Wait, but my Marshall isn't leveled up. Hmm. Well, here, might as well. So yeah, for anyone uh, who's come in late, there was a bug when the patch released where all of our gems got de-leveled by between 1 and 3 levels. Uh, if you had a level 15 gem, it's probably down to 14. If you had a level 21, it's probably down to 19. I was hoping to just wait to level them back up, but in the interim, I think I'm just going to do it manually. I mean, it's either that or I start leveling up my Tears of Blood. So we have 1,500 at level... Uh, at a tier 4. The, the abattoir disappeared a hundred years ago. I just love your name, Joey Box of Donuts. It's similar to another name I heard, uh, something Bag of Donuts. Joe Bag of Donuts. My grip style, um, I think I full palm it. When I used to be into competitive FPS, I would um, just finger grip. But it's also because I had my ideal mouse back then. It was a Razer Lachesis. I can't find another mouse with that same grip pattern, so... I mean, I guess I could start leveling up Marshall. If we're going back to Marshall... Might as well start leveling up Marshall then. Um, Alright, so let's see. One abattoir is going to give how much XP? I don't, it's definitely not enough to get it all the way to level 15. But let's see. It's going to get it far. It's only a bag of donuts if you're not trying. Okay, okay. So you automatically get the new glyph as soon as you complete one level of the abattoir. Look at all this XP. Just instantly. Instantly. Hey, cheers, Jack Bauer. Actually, ah, uh, yeah. We're close, but we can't quite get to 15. No, wait, did I get 15? I did get 15. Wow, one abattoir went from a rank 1 to a rank 15 gem. That's... That is something. Nice. Nice. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, Ire. Yeah, we might as well just get these back to 21. By the time the bug is fixed. Okay, we got an update, in fact. An update on Paragon Glyph issues with 1.2.3 posted four minutes ago. The team has identified an issue. The players are experiencing with Paragon Glyphs showcasing misrepresented levels. 
misrepresented levels? No, they're not misrepresented. They actually got deleveled because I lost Glyph Radius. Uh, we plan on addressing this on PC with a new client update that will be shipping later today. We will update players on timing of this release once available. For console, basically because of Xbox and because of Sony and Microsoft's procedures, they can't be as agile with releasing patches. Users that were max level on Paragon Glyph XP, you can re-level the glyphs in the meantime if you prefer until the fix is available. For those that were below the max Glyph XP, you can still progress your glyphs, and after the fix, we'll have that Glyph XP added to old amounts. Wait. Prior to 1, 2, 3. For those that were below the max Glyph XP, you can still progress your glyphs, and after the fix, have that Glyph XP added to the old amounts. Oh, okay, okay. Separately, we've seen reports from players regarding the advanced tooltip on the Tears of Blood Glyph, mentioning it is additive as opposed to multiplicative. This is a known issue. Ah. Okay. Well, I I mean, it's going to take very, like, two, two more runs. I'm going to max out my glyphs here, so that's fine. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a silly bug. Um, I'd rather there weren't a bug. But it's not a huge amount of stuff to regrind right now. Uh, yes, you need to finish Seasonal Journey to access the Avatar of Zir. The... All the the bug with glyphs is not letting me go into. I'm not going to PvP Blizzard always has have some. What's not letting you go into? What's the bug with glyphs? If if you don't have a level 100 character, you cannot handle Abattoir of Zir. Sorry, okay. Technically, you can probably with a level 90 something, right? But like, if you don't have an end game character that can crush end game content, you're not ready for Abattoir. That's why they lock it behind the season journey. All right, let's try it to your five. You will be back. The stars do not lie. Oh, I didn't actually, right, activate it. Well, um, and I should actually recraft. I need gallo wine. Iron Barb. <laughs> <A fine laughs> balance there. Get some extra armor going. As we dive into tier 5. My potions are maxed. Why do you think they made Abattoir instead of just raising the Nightmare Dungeon to higher levels? Um, because there's... Because the Abattoir is a temporary system. Kitsune, 72 month resub. Tuesday stream, <laughs> chaos, mayhem. Cats and dogs. Getting along. Yeah, because Avatar released today, we're, uh, we wanted to get a jump in on trying out this new pinnacle content. But yeah, so why not just raise Nightmare Dungeon levels? Because that's just more of the same. Avatar is similar to, but not exactly like Nightmare Dungeons. You are on a time limit. No, nothing drops. Uh, if they did just give higher tier nightmare dungeons, everyone would have called that lazy content, uh, and it would have been. I much prefer having a different thing. I don't want to just do higher level nightmare dungeons. I'm not saying I love this, but I appreciate that it's something different. Also, if they just raise the level of nightmare dungeon, they can't really take that out of the game. This is something that they're testing out. It's not going to be in season three. But they're going to get 
It's it's basically a temporary measure to add some form of pinnacle content, and they're going to see how the community reacts to it. Probably take feedback, suggestions, and bring it back in the future, or or introduce new things like this in the future. Uh, hopefully, in an even more interesting and engaging way. Man, the blast wave shrines in these are really powerful. Are shrines just ramped up? Filed up to 11 of these? Look at that. They just insta-kill. I mean, I'm not complaining. I'm just surprised. Ooh. And again, I fat-fingered. The thing is, if I change my keybinds now... Ah... Uh, I'm not going to hit what I want to be hitting. I could just temporarily move map off of tab. Just so that I stop pressing that. Because that is the offender. And what would I move? Bale's minion, five month, a resub. Eclipse wasn't feeling the season, wasn't really excited as it was the first season, but in my opinion, the season was met at best. Really? That is like pretty stark contrast to how everyone else felt between the two seasons. I'd say the vast majority of people thought Season 1 was meh, and Season 2 was a lot better. Nina Hales, how you doing? Any good builds for, uh, for Endgame as a Druid? Can't clear content to get uniques that allow the OP build. Uh, Pulverize is a really, really, really good Druid build for most of the game's content. Uh, okay, so we're going to change our keybind. We're going to try uh, tier 5 again. So map scream. Yeah, here. Potion. There. All right, so now if I fat finger, I'm going to fat finger equip <laughs> taking my potion. Just had a panic attack thinking I slept until Wednesday. <laughs> uh, yeah, GTA 6 not announced for PC is uh, is a damn shame. Alright, we're going to craft ourselves another key here. And try tier 5 again. Do you feel it? I'm glad that the potions persist through death. Oh, right. Now I'm pressing M. And... Klejno, 42 month. Risa, appreciate ya. Oh, watcha, watcha. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for coming on by. All right, take two. Spiders. Why did it have to be spiders? All the CC. The booms. Poison.
I was looking, I was like, oh man, it's uh The skeleton crossbow guy. And then I think that's what killed me. Is that do you guys think that's what killed me? I think it was the ballista, the skeleton ballista that got me. <laughs> oh man. Okay, we're gonna work on a three strike system. I get one more attempt. Before I decide, okay, it's time to change the build for Abattoir. Again, for anyone who's tuned in, I've not yet modified my build for Abattoir. This is a pretty uh, well-optimized endgame Hammer of the Ancients Barbarian for doing regular content. I want to see how that would work in the Abattoir before I start making changes to the build. For the abattoir. Good afternoon, obedient mammal. I'm doing great. I hope you all are too. Yeah, GTA 5 didn't release on PC until a year after it released on console. So my sigil powder is uh, rapidly, rapidly evaporating right now. So this is our... We're on two strikes. We're on two strikes. We're going to give ourselves one more attempt. So I'm not running disobedience. I'm running the normal setup without disobedience. I know that I need disobedience for abattoir but again i wanted to test the build before making changes to it i also don't have a good pair of pants to put disobedience on uh but yeah so for anyone who maybe doesn't quite know what the build does or what's going on exactly um there are sacrifices that i could be making to my damage to get a lot more defense there are some items that i have that are make me really good at dealing damage but as you can see, I'm taking a hell of a lot of damage. Right now, that's the issue, is how fast I'm dying rather than how fast I'm killing. Which means... An optimized character for level 100 content... And an optimized character for Abattoir of Zir... Ought not to be exactly the same kind of build. Uh, I guess it depends on, on how strong your, your build is, but in general, right? If the game is so easy and you're just effortlessly killing things and barely dying uh, in Abattoir, you're probably going to have to start sacrificing some damage. You feel compelled to stay, compelled to disobey. And now you stand <laughs> here because of you, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> well, hopefully the tier, the tier 5 Abattoir is not the sound of inevitability. Cheers, secret. <laughs> All right. So we'll see. We'll see. This is take three. This is my final attempt at the tier five before I start leveling my uh, my blood glyph. Change helm. You want me to get rid of my Tusk Helm? I don't know, man. My plan was to change out my pants, get some disobedience going. Okay, this is not a good one. There's a lot of the Kamikaze guys. There's these guys that shoot out the fire. It's a lot of damage spikes just from these, just from the mob type. Oh, great. Now there's the monsters that- the snakes that stun you. Wow, oh, this is... This does not bode well. Ooh. Oh, come on. My damage is also falling off. My bonks aren't bonking as hard as they can bonk.
Is this what it feels like to be a normal character? Okay, good. We got a good bonk on him there. Okay, our bonks are coming back. Just had a bad run of bonks there. I don't know, man. I'm just threading the needle. I'm not doing well on time. Don't you dare. Stun me. Sexy fresh, two month Risa, appreciate ya. Riker is always an awesome duty. <sighs> yeah, I'm falling behind on the clock. That's the problem. We're gonna get back to Greater Rift Fishing, by the way. That is 100% gonna be a thing with Avatar. For anyone who doesn't know, um, I guess without explaining in D3 terms, so fishing is gonna happen in that because of RNG, some of the Avatar runs are gonna be significantly harder than others, even of the same tier. So people are gonna open one, realize, oh no, this is bad RNG. I'm just gonna close it instantly and try a better ah uh, because i was focused on talking what killed me there could i have avoided it i wasn't giving my attention to the game but i said i give myself three strikes that's my third strike i might have been able to keep going there it wasn't looking good overall i might have been able to keep going if i was paying greater attention i pr probably wouldn't have died right there but something would have gotten me eventually. Probably. Probably. Hmm. Okay. So. I think the new plan now is I want to start trying to work in the new gem. The Tears of Blood Glyph. The question is whether it's worth swapping to this immediately or whether I should level it up first. 50% bonus to all rare nodes within range. Bonus increases by 10% every 10 levels. For every 5 core stats purchased within range, you gain 2% increased damage. So why change Helm instead of Pants? I'm losing four ranks to Aggressive Resistance passive, which is a whole lot of damage reduction. I'm losing a whole lot of Max Fury. I'm losing 52%... Uh, sorry. 15% more damage, Fury per second, and cooldown reduction. Whereas with the pants, I mean, potion capacity is whatever. Gaining the primary resource, it'll be a bit harder to regain the primary resource, but feels less dependent on that. Managed to clear uh, T3. Uh, failing was because of some one-shot ability graphics. Other 9% of the dungeon could not drain even 1% of my life. Okay, so, so Bez, you were saying that you feel that survivability is the stopgap here, more so than damage. Survivability is the main issue, gotcha. Yeah, we need to build our characters differently, basically. Those of us, especially builds that we're not accustomed to it. Okay, I need to go grab some more water before we um, dive in again here. 
but we will be right back. And we're back. Okay. Okay. Problem is, it's not generalized survivability, but survivability against spike damage. Because the difference between normal damage and uh, one shot is too high. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to try to find better pants in the meantime. So yeah, I think I'm going to start leveling up my my Zier. So I'm going to start doing some rank 1s. Some tier 1s to build up my... My XP on the new Glyph. And then keep an eye out on Pants as well. So yeah, we died three times in a tier five. Um, maybe would have been able to do a tier five, but the spike damage was just getting way too high. And I got to start building more for survivability here. But before we do that, let's uh, start up on that gem. Why don't we? Berserker Helm is good for bossing. Definitely would run Shaco or Helm with total armor, CDR, max life. Well, if I had a Shaco, I'd be running with the Shaco. <laughs> if you get more armor over 85%, will it help? Or the cap is on 85% reduced damage? What's the cap? Oh, I get what you mean. Um, Or do I get what you mean? Man, the difference between a rank 1 and a rank 5. Holy crap. It's like back to easy mode. 
I say, and then die. Again, overconfidence is what often kills me. I become complacent. Complacency, really. I stop paying attention, and then something, like, one-shots me. So I'm going to keep an eye out for some pants upgrades. It's also nice that Abattoir runs, they, they don't have objectives. Let's just go kill monsters, right? A lot of complaints about like the dungeon objectives and stuff. Alright, here we go. Where are they? Big boom. Alright, so... Uh, let's start leveling this. Oof. That's the thing, though. Only half a bar at a time. Okay. Wayne Gosson, thank you so much for the $20. Here's $20 for your shack. <laughs> Appreciate it. We've done we've done well over 200 bail run uh, durial runs, probably close to 300 durial runs. Um, people in my group have gotten shackos. I never got one. I got two Andes though. I got two Andarials visage. So yeah, this is the new glyph. You think Avatar will still exist after Season 2? It will not be in Season 3. That's confirmed. It might return in some form, but I, I don't think it's going to be exactly as it is. 15,000 armor is the soft cap. Okay. Okay. You got a shack on your third Durial kill? Congrats. Congrats. You got shack from one of our test runs, yeah. Well, 273 is how many we counted. I've done a bunch of Durial runs before then. That's why I say probably around 300. Oh yeah, the way XP is clipped there, yeah. Why don't I use disobedience? I will. I don't need dis- I, So before Abattoir, I did not need disobedience. Now, in order to use disobedience, I need to get a good item to put disobedience on. So, I would like to progress to disobedience. With disobedience, I should, I will get a ton more armor. I still have a good base to put them on, unfortunately. Maybe work with these. 
can work with that. Uh, so my plan is to swap out my Tebos for for disobedience. <sighs> that got most of it. Let's put this here for now. Let me do a quick gamble on some pants as well. Smiles. No, sacred. The next will be of fine quality. Well done. Terrible. The winds truly favor you, friend. Terrible. Ah, faith smiles. Mm. Fine quality. Well All done. Right, that's fine. That's fine. All right. Do we know at what level the glyph becomes? Um. Oh, geez, level fifty. Okay. Haha. <laughs> I see. I see. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's start depositing it. Did I get my marshal up? I did. So, let's see, Decimator here instead of Crusher. Instead of more damage, we're going to go with Marshall. It's going to help with the Shout cooldown and uptime. I'm going to drop that down. Now where are we get in our strength, we're getting it here. Okay, easy. Iron stays the same. Territorials and a. Oh no! Now we're getting might over here. Okay. Wait, hold on. Oh, we're respecting this entirely. Oh, geez. Okay, hold on. Uh, interesting. I see. I guess I just refund everything at this point. The trouble that it's going to cause me. What's that going to cost? Five million? Oof. Oof. Um. Hmm. Is this Warbringer? This is carnage. Yeah. No, I gotta move too many things. Alright, I'm just gonna refund everything. Alright. And redo our paragon here. Gonna get some ire, my life for ire in there.
By the way, folks, maxroll.gg. Has got build variants for Abattoir of Zir. And Blood Ridge. That looks good. What is this weird thing here? That's going to be might. All right. Uh, what level is my might? Uh oh. Oh, okay. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> We're fine. Blood Rage going. And now we move into Carnage, and this is where we get tier, Tears of Blood. Like so. Interesting. Jumps of damage while berserking, damage and strength. Okay. You got seven Shackos, Chonktown? Dang, congrats. Congrats, man. Okay, so this is where we want to just overload everything. Because of the bonus that you get. Just fit everything that you can get in that radius. 63.2% <laughs> 60, damage. 10 strength. Alright. that and uh, over here we'll just grab those all right now we're getting warbringer there we go And in goes the Crusher. Requirements met. Yeah, so level 1 Abattoir of Zero is equivalent to a Nightmare Dungeon 104. Yeah, so there's a bug right now where if you log in and you had level 21 glyphs, they're down to level 19. If you had a level 15 glyph, it's down to level 14. Glyphs have lost XP. Uh, they're going to resolve it, but in the meantime, uh, if you don't want to... If you don't want to wait, you basically have to re-level the glyphs yourself. However, just do level 1 abattoirs, and you're going to get that XP real super fast. Okay, Decimator now. And insert Marshall. Uh, 
Oh, I'm missing one. <laughs> uh huh. There's one Paragon point somewhere that I've forgotten to put. To allocate, let's see. Ah, uh, it's here. There we go. Easy. All right, cool. So now we are rocking the Tears of Blood Glyph, and we're going to slowly increase its power. So if you go to maxroll.gg, all the build guides should have updates with Avatar of Zero variants. Now, did we confirm that the Tears of Blood Glyph only works inside the Abattoir? Because that basically means that now you have a character that you're just going to run an Abattoir. I'm going to use my Ball Lightning Sword to farm things, I guess. Because otherwise, changing constantly builds is just a nightmare. Nothing about the glyph sets us limited to Abacarbs here. Okay, good. All right. People were saying before release that it was only going to work in the Abattoir. I don't know where they got that. That's what would be good for game balance. Uh... <laughs> For future seasons, but yeah, because now other like you've now added an item that makes the crazy strong builds even crazy stronger, crazier stronger. So limited to the season only, obviously. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I guess it's at a point where you're already effortlessly doing the content. It doesn't really matter if you're even more effortlessly doing it with the with the new glyph. Oh, Guardians arrived already. I didn't anticipate that. Oh, now they're divided. Yo, 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 yo! Hmm. Rip. I got a bad combination of affixes in there, and they were divided at the start so that I couldn't bonk them all together. Okay, okay, okay. Damn. Died in a tier one. Rip. Ah, <laughs> uh, I was just farming that for easy glyph XP. Dang. Uh, 
Uh, the glyph, I don't believe, unlocks on every character. I'm pretty sure you have to... Like every other character, you get the glyph per character and have to level up per character. What did I just die from? I... It was a bunch of stuff on screen. Can anyone do the instant replay to see? Yeah, the hotfix to fix the uh, glyph XP is coming out later today. Oh, if you're hardcore, Abattoir should scare you. Yes, it should scare you indeed. Um, hmm. So let me see. Let me see if I'm gonna make the swap to my new pants already. Get some disobedience running. Um. This is the best I have, which is sad. It's very sad. I can roll off cold resist into another useful damage resistance, hopefully. So I also don't have total armor is the issue. Nah, I should wait for better pants, I think. I should wait for better pants. I want to keep resilience. Sanguine brace, let's see. I have chemomancy. It gives me more fortify. Yeah, when I get the things. Yeah, when I get the things. For now, I'm going to just talk about some bad luck. And we'll... We'll go. Need something blessed? Cursed, perhaps? So at least I have total armor on my on my chest armor. But I should also get it on my pants. I'll keep an eye out for some better pants, basically. Hope and pray. Uh, the first run, I would not say is hard. If you can do a 100, you can do a tier 1 abattoir. So it was tier 5 is when my build started to suffer. But I had made no changes to my build prior to tier 5. Basically, I, I failed tier 5 three times. And now I'm like, okay, before I keep doing that and run out of my limited sigils, uh, let me level up some stuff a bit first. So now I have swapped in. I mean, I could already start trying it. I've, I've, I have made some changes. I could go try to do a tier 5 again. I'm going to at least try to get my... My glyph to rank two first.
It's funny, last time I also died when I had an artillery shrine active, I believe. Yeah, if you're playing hardcore, I would be very careful. Very careful. People, I, I, some people saying that it's the it's the spiky damage that's the real the real issue in abattoir. All right, here they come again. What the fuck? <laughs> what even? What could I have done differently? What could I have done better there? <laughs> oh my god. It's like the moment I saw him, I'm just dead. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hmm. Hmm. It's... Hmm. I'm rethinking my plan. It wasn't a one-shot? What was it then? You need to put on Doombringer and Grandfather, bro. Bro, if I had a Doombringer and a Grandfather, I'd have it equipped. Come on, man. <laughs> uh, okay. So, it's funny because we want, we went through tier 1, 2, 3, 4, basically no problem. And now I'm failing on tier 1. <laughs> Happened twice that the Bloodseekers killed me on tier 1. Holy crap. I don't have the 900 armor elixirs. You can't craft them. Um, I was before using the 500 armor elixir that you can craft, but I'm like, it's a tier one. I don't need it. Apparently I need it. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Jamie's saying there's no big difference between uh, Tier 1 and Tier 5 of Zero in terms of damage from the monsters. You can easily be killed in Tier 1, just like in Tier 5. Hmm. So it's just that they gain a lot more health? Song of the Mountain, another 200 armor. It's just so little, like... 200 armor is, what, a 5% armor increase for me? Not even. It's a 2% armor increase. Got a tier 9 with ball lightning sork. Nice. Proof that it wasn't a one-shot. Okay. We're, re we're reviewing the replay. No, oh, I can't get that. Ah, uh, no, what happened now? Oh, my setup's all messed up now. I shouldn't have done that.
Okay, well, I can't I can't get it on screen, but something hit me and then something else hit me, basically. I believe enemy levels are going up every five levels, so one of four is fifty-five, five to nine is fifty-six, ten to fourteen is fifty-seven, etc. Hmm. Hmm. Most important stat for in-game build is armor. It has to be around 13.5 thousand to be a, a kind of a safe place. Yeah, so it's... I, it's my pants, man. I need pants with percent armor. The only, my only source of percent armor right now is my chest. Zway of Pembro. Okay, cheers, man. Um, yeah, so the issue is I cannot get pants. Deterministically, at least. Um... already checked and I don't believe I have any good pants. I guess I can get these pants actually off of my sorcerer. They're not ideal, but they're better and I actually it actually this is a really easy swap. I might as well I might as well. Yeah, they're not perfect, but they will do. They already have disobedience on them. It's a really bad damage reduction from close roll. But at least I get up to 10k armor. Not even enough. Not even enough. I expect my armor to jump up a lot more than that. But the disobedience gets my armor up, right? Gain 1% increased armor for 4 seconds, stacking up to 60%. 60% more armor... Gets me to a 16,000 armor. So we can use these at least temporarily until I get actual better pants. The problem is that the, the delay before the Bloodseekers spawn is enough to make disobedience fall off. Ah. Uh. Okay, um, with that though, I technically take, could take off Ghostwalker, because now that I don't have T-Bows, I don't need Metamorphosis anymore, so we can rejigger some other things. Oh, but now if I'm changing everything on my build, oof. Yeah, I mean, there's no point in taking Metamorphosis anymore. So I need Prey on the Weak. And a Cursed Touch. I didn't get a Cursed Touch. Because I was like, I don't need a Cursed Touch. Shoot. Okay. The one that I did not unlock. Hmm. So, Prey on the Weak makes Zen deal more damage to vulnerable enemies. And it makes it such that enemies affected by Vampiric Curse are considered vulnerable. And a Cursed Touch has a chance to inflict Vampiric Curse on enemies. Uh, 
single embrace. There's no point in taking resilience because we're just constantly. <laughs> uh. Ravenous. Chance to increase your attack speed. Mm. Undying will make us regain life whenever we cast a skill. I guess that's the good combo then with with Ravenous for a 40% attack speed. Curse to touch, only good if you can't apply vulnerable consistently. Prayer of the week is bugged. Oh, rip. Yeah, we got resilience here. We're on a 25% uh, resistance elixir and use skulls if you're not resistance capped. I could do that. Oh, I've already lost. Oh, because... Wait, yeah, where did I lose my resist? My, I was resist capped. What did I just change to lose that? Oh, probably something in my Paragon points. Okay. The thing is, I'm going to be triple resistance uncapped. No, just dual, I guess. But I could get more armor. Um, is it worth it, though? Hmm. I mean, we, we have now the disobedience, so that's going to help at the very least. So if Prey on the Week is bugged, then what am I taking instead of Metamorphosis? Because there's no point in taking Metamorphosis if I'm not running T-Bows. I guess I can just get Ravenous. More sustained damage and recovery from undying because casting skills heals you for 3% life. Australia just announced the name of their first lunar rover by the popular vote. It is Rover. Nice. With a change of pants from 8.9 to more than 10k is a big difference. Okay. Okay. How you doing, Saratha? With automation 2.0, do you think we can get gear sets like in D3? Um, I think it's going to be something independent of itemization 2.0. Uh, I think they're holding off on gear sets until they get itemization 2.0 done. I do think we'll get sets. I don't think they're going to be like D3 sets, though. Yeah, so there's a bug where our level 21 glyphs got de-leveled to, like, 19. Okay, well, we'll go try this again. We'll go try this again.
So it's twice in a row we breezed through the tier one and died to the the blood seekers. Which is hilarious. Maybe I should pop that potion though. Five hundred more. Yeah, you know what? I I have time. I have time. Timer's ticking, but I got time to craft the potion. How much does an incense cost? Okay, we're gonna get the iron barb. So the elixir that he mentioned was Song of the Mountain. The last 20 minutes. Okay. If we get really desperate, if we get really desperate, we'll go for it. All right. Ah! All I want to do is level up my glyph. Okay, where do I see my stacks of disobedience? Now, if I can stay in conduit until the uh, blood seekers, that'd be great. It's not gonna happen, but. At least you can't die as a as a condi. So if we beat this one, we're gonna go try to do the tier five again. So that means we're going to have our Tears of Blood to rank 2. So what do, you, what do you guys think? Am I going to die to the Blood Seekers again? Aren't the blo Isn't fighting three Blood Seekers more exciting than fighting one Rift Guardian? One dungeon boss? Okay, here they come. Okay, we got one. We're already done better. Oh, oh. We got two. All right. There we go. On a tier five. On to tier five. Will I play Pee Wee Affliction? I would like to. 
I don't know if I'll have time to, but I would very much like to. I'm very interested. Disobedience Stacks is one of the full plate icon with fastly fluctuating numbers. Okay, full plate icon. I'll try to pay attention to that. Third icon looking like chest armor. Okay. Uh, the fix for the glyph is supposed to happen today. Fix for the glyph XP. Supposed to be today. Alright, our Tears of Blood is now rank 2. What is it giving us now? percent damage reduction from close enemies. Six damage strength. Welp. Next radius increase at level 50. <laughs> ah. And how much does it cost now? 4,600. <gasps> oh my god. Oh my god, the XP requirements go up so steeply. Holy crap. Wow. Um, but yes, you have to complete the full season journey in order to access Abattoir of Zir. Can you confirm the tier 7 seagull bug? I don't know. Can chat confirm the tier 7 seagull bug? Burned a whole lot of sigils before realizing the glyph bug. It probably would have helped to be full powered. Uh, hope they somehow compensate us with sigil powder after the bug fix. Sheesh. Yeah, that's it. So before you run abattoir, make sure you go in and you check to make sure that your... Um, any rank 15... Glyphs you have are rank 14, therefore you've lost radius. You completed the season journey and still can't access it. You gotta go to town. You gotta talk to... The Mystic. The Enchanter guy. And then from there, you're gonna unlock the ability to, uh... To craft your first tier sigil. The tooltip on Tears of Blood is bugged. It is multiplicative. It says additive. That is incorrect. So you should see the Blood Forge sig the Blood Forge sigil appear. All right, let's go try a tier five again. Feeling confident. <laughs> Feeling confident. Oh, I didn't consume it. Right. We got that. What's up, prophecy? Do I bind my mice, my mouse side buttons to anything? No, because I'm left-handed. I use the mouse with my right hand. My right hand is too clumsy to have extra buttons. The seven seagull bug is giving double XP than normal. The seven... Oh, oh, sigil. You're saying that a tier seven sigil is giving twice the XP that it should. I see. Interesting. Interesting. What do you think is going to be the strongest class with the new glyph? Hoda Barbarian. Hammer the Ancient's Barb. Otherwise, Ball, Lightning, Sorcerer. Rax and Wadijo are stuck at tier 11. Didn't Rob do a 15? What's Rob at now? What classes are Rax and Woody playing? Okay, this is not good. It's these guys. I already have bad RNG on this run. Yep. Got a bit too ballsy there.
Don't you dare. Don't you dare. I do feel the difference in uh, my resources without... without um, T-Bows. No, 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 no! Stupid corridors. Yeah, I'm still trying to dodge through people to increase my resource. Playing like I have a T-Bones. What a bad map! It's GR fishing all over again, boys. <laughs> I saw that, and I could have avoided it, but I dodged back into it. Ah. Ah, uh, okay. We're going to do another five. That was a combination of bad RNG and making a mistake. You make one mistake, and you're dead. Rax is ball lightning sword. Woody Joe is trying with rogue. Oh, interesting. Good for Woody. Good for Woody. Oh, man. Rob reached 20? Get out. Rob's at 20? Shut the front door. That's amazing. I, as, as one person was going to hit 25, it was going to be Rob. Oh, man. My armor's at 10, 10 11,000, but I got killed by a uh, poison explosion. You don't have to be max level. You have to have finished the season journey. You want to be max level. This is extremely difficult content. Quinn is hiding in PoE, delaying as usual. Not better pants. Okay. I'm going to try another... Another tier five here. And hopefully I don't... Hopefully I got better RNG. And I don't dodge back into a poison explosion. I got a bad feeling about this. Oh, yeah. No, oh, those guys do big damage. Oh, door throwers and... This is not a good start. No! Okay, yeah. A big wind-up attack. No, no blood boil. Oh, blood boil.
Thread in the needle, though. Thread in the needle. Blood boils are not helping keeping enemies alive constantly. Any shrines helping? Has anyone started using an Avarian strategy to cheese things? I'm wondering how popular that will be. The shrines are so strong in these. Holy crap. I mean, look, look how ridiculous these shrines are. Can I shrine my way to the blood seekers? No, 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 no. No, no, no. Big bonks, and I cannot lie. No, 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 no. Oh, I would have fat fingered that. Thank God I changed my keybind. Not even at the uh, the blood seekers yet, man. I don't like this. Fuck. No. Oh, no, 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 I'm out of potions. I'm out of potions, I'm out of potions. I gotta get out of here. Uh, let me go! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. No! Shit. Fuck ass. Fuck. Bitch. I'm out of potions! That's the thing with losing Tebos, and I've also lost potions. I can't get close to this guy! I can't get close to this guy! No! <laughs> the 
Okay. Okay, wasted a bunch of time there. I'm gonna go get my potions refill. Oh my gosh. Okay. Fast, fast, fast. Replenish potions. You won't find a better healer. Good thing that the thing is right there. Good thing the healer is right there. Okay. I got potions back. Oh, I backtracked so much. We're still doing okay on time. Just have to be more careful with using up my potions. About to get the blood seekers. How well do you think that? <laughs> How well do you guys think that's gonna go? Blood seekers. Didn't go great, right? Isn't too cold yet. Doing okay for now. Doing okay for now. Thing is, I have no. Everything's on cooldown. I was a fraction of a second off from being able to pop my shout. Ah, uh, through the wall, he got me. D E D dead. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. What is the temperature today? It's only negative six. It's not too bad. It's not too bad today. Cheers, patient zero. Ah. Oh. With the glyph XP scaling needed for upgrading compared to how much you get from completing the lower tiers, it once again rewards no lifers and botters, taking away any chance of, at fair uh, competition. Yeah, that's why I hope that the, um, the the glyph doesn't make it into the base game. Like, it's fine for now, I guess. But, yeah. Uh, that was that was not the hardest difficulty. That was tier 5 of 25. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, the highest Rob has done is tier 15. Okay, not tier 20. Gotcha. That's still amazing. Does Rob seem hopeful that he can do a tier 25? Cheers, Jack Bauer. Yeah. Rob says he won't sleep until he gets tier 25. You cannot skip levels, no. In order to get the recipe for the next level, you have to have completed a certain level. He's grinding out the sigil now. A maxed out sigil gives you how much more power? So you could play in a party, 
But as soon as one person dies, everyone gets kicked out. Rob's got all the best gear. So to craft the sigil, you just got to go talk to your, um, your occultist. The thing is, you, have, you must have first completed season journey. Oh, Rob is using party tricks to fast level the sigil. I see. You have a Varian, and you can get two shrines at the same time. It helps. I could imagine, yeah. Yeah, I think a Varian is going to be a popular option for these. But yeah, I mean, it seems as though... At max level, you're getting a a 20% power increase, right? 20% more damage, rather. I guess it's more about the radius and how much that affects things. So I don't think 20% more damage is the difference between doing a tier 15 and a tier 25. How did I kill me behind the wall? Because F me, that's why. <laughs> Some effects just go through walls. That's what it is. So, the, the powerful thing about the new glyph, or the most powerful thing, arguably, is that it gives a 50% bonus to all rare nodes within range. Um, and that you're stacking in the, the, um, the core stats there. So you basically just want to fill in everything. You put it somewhere, you fill in everything in order to uh, get the, the highest damage bonus you can get. Well, oh, hold on. Okay. Here's the thing, right? So it's going to be a 20% at max level, right? It's a 20% increased damage bonus per five core stats. So I'm already at a six, I'm already dealing 66% more damage right now. It's 66.4 multiplicative damage that I'm getting right now. So at max level, that's what? It's like 330% more damage basically, or no, even more. No, it's it's <laughs> it's six hundred and sixty six percent more damage than what we're gonna be dealing. So we're gonna be dealing ten times more damage. Uh the glyph apparently does work outside of the abattoir. I haven't tested it myself, but nothing on it says that it doesn't. Yeah, so with this glyph maxed out, you're dealing, let's round it off to 700% more damage. Which is the equivalent of eight times more damage, right? Because 100% more damage is double damage, 200% is triple. So 700% more damage is eight times more damage at max level. Rare node bonus expands to... Oh, shoot, it's true. Oh, right, it gets bigger. <laughs> this is going to get even bigger. Yeah, so there's a bug right now where all of your glyphs got deleveled by a level or three. They're going to fix that by the end of the day, but otherwise you can just in the meantime um, re-level them. 
Okay, we're gonna try another time. I'm just gonna go fill up on some water. We'll be right back and we'll try again. Alrighty. Okay, so do we try the tier 5 again, or do we go just level our glyph a bit more? Like, the logical thing is to go level a glyph more, right? But I'm trying to do what what is interesting for you guys to see. With bigger radius, it'll be a thousand percent more damage, would it not? Honestly, that probably checks out, yeah. Yeah. That checks out. Started playing Diablo thanks to you. Been loving the game. Great to hear you're loving the game. I don't ever have a question. I have a level 60 barb. What spec do you suggest level the rest of the way as? Hammer the Ancients. Hammer the Ancients. Go level it. Level 1 or 2 glyph. Okay. Alright. We'll go level it up another once or twice. So, we'll reiterate here. I took my existing Barbarian build, made no changes to it, and beat level 4. Beat tier 4. Tier 5 is when the struggle began. But with no changes and without using the new glyph, did up to tier 4. So many materials I barely use. They should have a season of crafting or just implement uses for the mats. Yeah, one of the devs saying something about that. They were going to maybe look at uh, things to do with mats in the future. Level it five before each tier. What do you mean, Alaska?
Level the glyph by five levels before upping the tier. That's a lot of XP. It's gonna take a long time. The other thing that sucks is that um, if you want to do it on multiple characters, your characters are sharing the sig the um, yeah sigil XP. Sorry, sigil materials. So if like I burn through all my sigil materials, I can't just then go on my ball lightning and start you know leveling that one because I won't be able to access Avatar. I, I feel I do feel the 66% more damage. <laughs> At least in tier 1 here. But if you have a group, everyone has powder. Oh, am I actually going to get them while I'm still in this form? Yeah. <laughs> Got a Condi. Condi Bloodseekers. Lol. Oh, man. It's going to take a few of those. It's going to take a few of those. You get Sigil Powder when you complete a level? Really? What happens if you deplete Sigil Mats? You gotta go back to Nightmare to farm Mats? Yep. Yep. What is this weird stuttering? Why is this happening? There's a couple of yellows for your efforts, right? Uh, How you doing, Big Ben? One zero run gives 1.2k dust. Costs 800 to craft. Oh. So you should be able to sustain them. As long as you're not failing, you should sustain. Emphasis on not failing. Okay. That's good. Also means, in theory, if you're leveling alts and stuff, you can actually use uh, the dust to farm other sigils.
Hey, cheers, Evan. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Rob just did calculations that'll take around 325 hours to level up the glyph 50. <laughs> and that's using his No 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 what is happening? No! Why? No! Oh god, okay. Pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. And that Fuck! And that's with his method? That's with his method? It's gonna take 325 hours? Assuming you do a run in in two minutes, is it? 2.5 minutes. 325 hours of tier one. Wow. Three hundred and twenty-five hours just to get it to fifty. And it goes up to two hundred. Okay, okay, okay. 80 hours a week for a month, right? How you doing, Curious? Yeah, we're back to running GRs. It's a lot more punishing. Oh, man. Okay. This in a group is frustrating. Enemy health scales up even more and adds uh, more odds of stupid one shots on someone. And as soon as one person dies, it's all ogre. I mean, it seems just getting, like, every character should, at the very least, go do a level 1, get the, 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 the gem, and that's it. Just the gem by itself at rank 1 is a huge upgrade. Like, my gem is level 2, and I already have 60% more damage multiplicative on it. One glyph. So I'm calling them gems because it's Diablo 3. One glyph is giving me 66% multiplicative more damage.
Blast waves. Okay, my blast wave's gonna kill the uh the blood seekers this time. Come here, they come. Oh, oh. This, this freaking fire thing terrifies me. Come on, man. God damn it. Ah, uh, all right. Do I just, like, go for it when I see that and then don't be afraid of the fire? Like... Ah, Ripperoni. Ripperoni. Has the Butcher made an appearance yet? Oh, God. I haven't run into a butcher yet. Has anyone run into a butcher in one of these? That'd be insane. You cleared an aid? Congrats, Gideon. What build? Ask ever fire. <laughs> Don't be afraid of the fire. Embrace the fire. <laughs> What's up, Doc 2K? Here's saying, I have high hopes for Avatar of Zir because it's temporary. I hope it stays that way and the community dislikes it as much as I do. I really don't like the idea of GRs so the timer and some ridiculously long grind to level a glyph for a stat increase. Shh. No way, Meow. You're, you're kidding me. Frost Giant did not partner with Chris Metzen to develop the story. Wait, when he was at Warchief? Oh, oh, okay, okay. So it's like he's not anymore? Is that it? Bring on the butcher, jeez. Jeez. You need that armor percent on chest and legs, I guess. Well, I have it now on chest and legs. I just don't have... I, I So there's room to optimize my pants. My pants are overall not good. It was in the Kickstarter, okay. Ah, nice, Gideon. How many more hours till PTR from D3? Uh, I don't know, does anyone know? Yeah, I'm getting my... It's funny, ever since I changed my build, now the Bloodseekers are kicking my butt. I got through tier 1, 2, 3, 4, no problem. Now I keep getting killed by Bloodseekers on tier 1. with this one very potent immunity bubble glyph for the seekers you know what it's not a bad idea it's good to see you die a lot I mean in a good way it seems engaging and player skill is required I've got to try myself with my thorns bar I'm scared it is Definitely more challenging than what is currently, what was previously in the game. Ah! 
spiders. Spiders and lunatics. It's not good. Yeah, the Bloodseekers make for a more formidable boss than any Nightmare Dungeon boss ever has. This time we're going to get them. This time we're going to get them. Here they come, here they come. Protection Shrine, we're good. I just gotta kill him before he can do anything any, anything dumb. There. Okay, we're good, we're good. We're good. Alright. Finally get some XP on the glyph. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what bar builds will be good for this? Hammer of the Ancients. I have hold about any particular thing about... The build I need to keep an eye out for. Yeah, you're going to find that survivability will become an issue. So, you're going to want to eventually find a way to work disobedience into the build. To really stack up your armor. Um, damage won't be so much of a problem, but survivability. You need to work more survival in than you're accustomed to with a Hoda Barb. Uh, what would you want to see changed or added in loot 2.0? Oh my gosh, so much. Uh, there's, there's not a short answer to that. Um, so I have a few issues with itemization. Uh, and I've had these issues from, from launch. In my review of D4, I believe I simplified it as itemization is just not as interesting as it could be. And uh, I think this largely comes down to affixes. Something additionally that has happened since my initial impression of the game is... Um, what's become more apparent to me is the the... Cognitive burden of comparing stats constantly. Um, and what you need to look out for as good stats on gear. So, I, I guess, I don't want to just say all of itemization is bad, because that's not true. Um, the whole, like, uh, uniques, I like uniques. I think those are well implemented. Uh, I think we need more uniques that are, like, kind of game-changing uniques. Uh, but overall, yeah, the uniques I think are well implemented. Uh, legendary aspects as well, you know, that works nice. Same thing where I prefer aspects that do things interesting rather than just making numbers bigger. Systems that interact with each other, things like that. 
Um, most of my issues come down to the affixes on gear. That I think, the for the most part, affixes aren't as interesting as they could be. And we have a lot of bloat of uninteresting affixes. Mako 86 Crow, two month a resub. Hope you're doing well. So, like for instance, take the, you know, damage versus or damage to, right? We have many, many, many stats that ultimately all they do is just add conditional damage. There's nothing inherently wrong with that, but it's it's just different ways of getting more of, of a flat damage value that isn't particularly thematic, flavorful, or, or interesting. Um, in theory, it's interesting to be like, ah, well, depending on what kind of build you want, maybe you want, you know, core skill damage, maybe you want damage versus close, maybe you want damage versus uh, crowd controlled enemies. But ultimately, it, it, it really all just is more damage. It's just taking the idea of plus damage and dividing it into a million different categories, all basically doing the same thing. Um, which just isn't as interesting as it could be. Um, like, I, I really like the idea of um, elemental damage, for instance. I don't think it's ever been really well executed, and I, I've written design documents on this, but... In short, and I'm not saying to balance it this way, but I think it would be more interesting if we had element, hold on, uh, Chillax Time, new sub via Prime Gaming, welcome, thank you for the sub, appreciate you. It's so like, imagine we do away with those damage affixes and instead we go back to like, plus fire damage, or plus lightning damage, or plus cold damage, right? To me, like, it's automatically more interesting... Well, asterisk, hold on. And that with those, depending on the elemental damage type, it would do something different based on the element. So, what does fire do? Fire burns. So, implicit with the extra damage of fire damage, it's also burning enemies, setting them on fire. And there's a burning mechanic in the game, and there are skills and abilities and things, and, and Paragon that synergizes off of versus burning enemies. So now you're folding a damage stat in with a conditional, uh, uh, an effect, rather. So for instance, um, and the way to implement that, right, one potential implementation is we already have Lucky Hit built into the game as a mechanic. What if every element had a lucky hit thing? Fire has a chance on lucky hit to burn enemies. Cold has a chance to chill. Lightning has a chance to stun. Uh, poison just poisons, you know, whatever. Um, so I'm not saying exactly that way, but now we're taking something that is tied to some kind of a core fantasy, right? Like, now it's an affix, It's this is a fire weapon. It's wreathed in flame. You know what that is. You know what it means. You intuitively understand... A, a flaming weapon should burn enemies, it should set them on fire. So now it's it's thematically interesting, it's uh, mechanically doing something that's more than just extra damage. To me, those are like more interesting affixes. Uh, one thing that I, that I do, so one thing that improved itemization in my opinion was the revamp to the way resistances work. So, and that's because you kind of play this mini game of, well, to max my resistances, now I need to get this resist on this piece of gear or this there. So it's a it's a it's a neat little puzzle to to complete. As opposed to just, well, stack as much as you can, right? Like you reach a point where, well, I don't need any more fire resist. More fire resist doesn't help me. And you can solve for these, you can solve this puzzle in different ways. You can do it on your gear. You can do it in your paragon points. Uh, different classes have access to, to different means of solving this puzzle. So that's something that is mechanically interesting. And interesting when it comes to builds and building your character. And um, how you equip your character. 
anytime there's ever a singular answer across all builds, it's uninteresting, right? So if ever the answer is, well, you always want to stack this. It doesn't matter what your build is, what class you are, you always stack more X, then X is not functioning as it should, in my opinion. So, it's about having affixes that are applicable to different builds that are desired in greater or lesser quantity depending on what your build is, what your character is, but also... Because you can argue, well, that's exactly what plus to core damage, plus to this damage, plus to that damage is. Um, but those just aren't fundamentally interesting when at their core they are really just the same thing. They're, they're just plus damage. Curious thing, personally, I dislike itemization on a fundamental level. Everything you said I agree with, but I also wholly dislike how legendaries work. I dislike legendary powers being just detachable and thrown around between different rares. I want Legos to feel legendary. Legos don't even exist in D4, really. What if they were called legend what if they were called rare powers? Would just like changing the name fix it for you? Pretty much, yeah? Okay. <laughs> but then you need to add actual Legos? Do we, though? Does Do we need unique items and legendary items? Sylph saying, too much type of affixes that make the item useless if you see two of them. Yeah, because there's so much affix bloat, that means there's so many useless affixes for your particular build, yeah. Bun uh, got spoiled with Grim Dawn's loot filter. If it wasn't for this game's graphic style and combat, I'd be out. In D4, I feel like I'm looking at gear more than playing. That's the thing. That's the issue that needs to be resolved as well. So simplified affixes where you don't have that cognitive burden of comparing gear. Uh, we do have a clan, yeah. If you go on Discord.gg... Uh, slash Riker, there's, um, that's where we have information on the clan. Watching streamers play ball lightning and getting dunked on by suppression bloodseekers has been so entertaining all morning. <laughs> I knew that, that ball lightning would have some trouble. Oh, yep. Alright, folks, so I think that's where we're going to call our stream for the day. Made some good progress here. We got a 66% damage increase with that new gem. Uh, again, we got, without even changing our build on Hoda, tier 4 easy. Could have probably done a tier 5 with some more practice, but so I'm going to make some changes. Uh, I will try to optimize the build further, uh, get better actual pants that are good for this. Find other ways that I could improve this for Abattoir. Um, also interested to see how other classes are going to perform in other builds. But yeah, we're going to thank everybody for coming on by today. We're going to thank our mods for overseeing things. We're going to give a big thanks to all of our supporters. We're going to thank you all for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic rest of your evening. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye.